Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity Shaders tutorial. In this one, as requested, I'm going to be doing a water tutorial to make something that looks quite a bit like this. Um, with water, normally you might also want vertex displacement where it, it actually looks like it's moving up and down because this is completely flat on a plane. The only reason why it looks like it has depth is because we're using a normal, which is the method we're doing this with. And I'll show you, obviously, when we get into making the shader, how you do that. Um, one other thing I'm going to mention before we actually do this tutorial is I'm thinking of other ideas for Unity tutorials rather than doing shaders every single day because I will keep doing shaders, obviously, but I feel like if I keep doing them every single day, I'm going to run out of ideas for what I can do with Shader Graph. So I'll, I'll delay them. I'll do like one every two days or one every three days or something. But I want other ideas for Unity tutorials in between. So, for example, I could do a series on like how to, you know, do the basic things in a RPG because I'm making an RPG in my own time. Or I could do uh, how to do a 2D game or side scroller or whatever, or a mobile game. Just I want people to ask and put their ideas in the comments for what kind of a uh, game or what, yeah, to make a series on first. Obviously, I can do more series ser series uh, afterwards. But yeah, I want ideas for the first one to start off with, and then obviously I'll move on um, while still making other videos at the same time. I just want more ideas. Um, so anyway, let's get into it. Uh, so let's bring that out and obviously this is like animating it I'm not in play mode right now um, so what we want to do is we want to create a new material and I've already named that water mat so I'll just call this water and I'll just call this shader um, waves or something just so I don't have anything named the same we'll put that onto the water and then boom we're back to a normal plane with the shader on it the empty shader so the only thing you need for this is you need a normal. Now you can, uh, this is mine, the one I'm using. I won't put it in the description. You can easily search it. All I did to find it was to go onto the internet and you can just search uh, water normal map seamless. They're usually seamless anyway. And obviously normals look like this. And what they do is it basically tells Unity how it wants light to hit the uh, image so that even though this isn't the color of our thing, this is how light hits it. And obviously if I went and downloaded a different one and I set that as the uh, normal in the shader, then that's the bumpiness of it. Basically think of a normal as how the bumpiness of the material. Uh, and it helps it look like it's got depth, even though it technically hasn't. So go find one that looks good for you, whether you want your waves to look like this or like this or like this. Obviously the bumpier it is, the more, light, the more noticeable it'll be. This is the one I'm using here if you want to find it. Just this one. I don't know, just found a random one. Whatever's right for you. Anyway. Um, Make sure you've got a normal, and that's all you really need for this uh, in like preparation. Wait, where did I put? Oh, it's over here. Okay, so on the output, we actually don't have to change anything at all, which is obviously nice. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to sort out the wave moving. So somewhere we want a uh, sample texture 2D. Well, actually, first of all, let's make our parameter. So we want texture, and we'll just call it normal. Now. We want to put in this so we can see it while we're testing. Now here's our normal, and we'll put it into here. And this won't work originally because you see here it's taking it in as a default, which as far as I know is just an albedo. We have to change this to normal so it treats it as a normal map. And now you can already see how the black bits are where it's darker and the blue, I don't know why blue is the color, it just is. Uh, that's the color of the, um, that's where the light is. Now if we put that straight into the, um, normal you can actually see now we've already got our material to have the bumpiness let me just go in here and in the shader just go and apply when it lets me just go and apply the normal and then now you see our thing has the bumpiness but there's a few problems which we're going to change where one is it looks a bit too stretched it's taken this one little image which is like is it 300 by 300, something like that? Very, very small resolution. And it's stretched it onto this giant plane. So it looks a bit, looks a bit bad. Um, one other thing is we want it to be animated. We want to have color on it. And we also, one cool effect is by layering two on top of each other, moving at different speeds to look like actual, how the sea would look or how water would look. Um, so the way we would do that part is by having another sample texture 2D and just feeding in the same thing here. But we want to change some values. So, for example, we want them to be, let's change this to a normal. We want the two things to be slightly different. Let's just unhook this because we're not going to go straight in there. We won't be able to. Um, 
Okay, so we need to obviously have some kind of way of offsetting them. I've used that in my last two videos, so we're going to get tiling and offset. And we need one for each. So, tiling and offset. And then we output the UVs, just like last time. And now, the, oops, sorry. And now this is how we, or where we change everything. So, tiling is up to you. Um, for this, we're going to leave one, well, we actually, what I'll do is I'll just make a vector ones that we can tweak the tiling. So I'll put like a layer one tiling uh, here and layer two tiling here. And I will give those default values. That's probably a good idea. So we'll go for like two and three or something, just so the bottom one is a bit uh, more than the top one. Wait, sorry, I've already dragged them in. All right. Um, so I need to just hook this up to the tiling. And hook this up to the tiling here. There we go. So the X and Y for the tiling is going to be two on here, two and two, and then three and three down here. So now we've got the same texture, but there, this one's got more of it in the smaller area, which is the uh, look we're going for. And you'll see why that looks good in a second. Now, we're going to have to change the offsets by using time, just like we do normally to move stuff around. But the problem is, as we always know, X and Y. So if we use time into this, we could offset it, but it would always move diagonally. Now, obviously, you might want your water to move diagonally, and you can always rotate it anyway. But it's a good idea, actually, in my opinion at least, to always be able to tweak values like that, just because if you can choke tweak it, it's better than you know not being able to. So we're gonna use a combine, which is what we use quite often, and we're gonna we're gonna output the uh, vector twos as um, the offsets. So this is like how uh, fast it moves, and we can sort out how fast on the x and how fast on the y it moves by changing the r and g values on here. So the r value goes in first because it's RG. So R will change the X and G will change the Y. Hopefully this is all making sense. If you've watched my last few tutorials, it should. And then as you might expect, we need time. And now let's say I just put time straight into here. That's gonna move it, but not, not how we want it to. Also, because it takes in an R and a G. I mean, yeah, we could just also output time to G. It still doesn't give us the effect we want um, at all. <laughs> so. Because the problem is, if time's continually increasing, let, let, let's just let's just do it. Let's just do it. So, we're going to add some more vector ones. These are going to be to control the x and y movement of the wave. So, wave speed x and uh, wave speed y. Now, what values did I use for these? I just want to make sure it's sensible. I used 0.3 by default. Um, but that that was quite fast. I'll go for Point, it was actually really fast. 0 0.05, I think, looked better. 0 0.05. And now what we're going to do with these speed x and speed y is this is going to be able to control the x and the y of the waves. So time in with the wave speed x, and then get another multiply. Time in with this. So hopefully this should be obvious to you. These two multiplies are just so we can control how much a time the time affects in the x and the y. And then the way we output it is we this is the x and this is the y. And now that is sorted for the wave movement. As you see down here, that's moving and that's moving at the same time, at the same speed, but there's more of this in the short area, smaller area. So when we layer it, it looks better. And also, um, if you change this to something bigger, so this is the y, so this is up and down. If I change that to two, as you see, now it's still moving to the left a teeny bit because of this, but it's moving up and it's moving down really fast because um, I've set that to two. But we'll, let's leave that at 0.5. Whoops, uh, point. There we go. Now the last bit we need uh, for this to be able to display it is we can't pass in two normals to our output node to the master node. So one thing we can do is we can use the lerp function, and with the lerp, basically, if you remember from last video. Lerping has a minimum and a maximum, basically two values, and t is how far between them we are. So what we can do is we can uh, pass in both our values as the a and b. So these are the two different maps, the, the two different ones. And we can now control how far between the two we are. Now let's, let's link that up to the normal, and you'll see currently this is what it looks like. Okay, it's getting there. But 
it, it looks it looks okay it looks okay but yeah we can change that so what we're gonna do down here is we're gonna say we're gonna take in a vector one for the way to control how much whether we're using more of this texture or more of this one this is just a tweaking thing again so let's just say um, I don't know percentage of um, I really don't know what to call this percentage of main tech main normal I don't know you call it what you want basically that's what it means that's why I'm calling it that um, and we'll set that to we can set that to a slider because oops, a slider because that's always going to be between zero and one this t here only takes in between zero and one if you go below zero it ignores it and if it goes above one it ignores it it just treats it as so if it goes above one it treats it as one if it goes below zero it treats it as zero so let's take that and we want to alert that value well, actually no we don't need to do that if i've uh, capped it i don't think that should no, that'll be fine. Let me just test if it works. Sorry, I think it does. Um, so as you see here, if we change this slider, we can change from the two different maps uh, that we've got. And one really cool effect is having both visible, but one a bit more than the other. So now you can see one of them is moving over the other one. And it gives it a really cool, it gives it more of like a cloud effect in my opinion, but it does look really good for the water. Now, if you have one or the other, it's just a bit... Meh. I like, I'll, I'll go for point 0.4, that looks cool. Okay, and then all we need now really is the color because it looks a bit bland. So, first of all, let's take in, let's move up here, we need room for this. It's going to go into the albedo anyway. So, we want a color, uh, main color. We'll set that to a nice blue. Obviously, we can tweak these in the editor anyway, the mean specter. Now let's say we did that to the albedo. See, this is all about tweaking for you now. That's that's boring, but it works. Now we have a plain color, but having a plain flat color for the water really doesn't look nice. Even if we tweaked it to be more suitable, it really just doesn't doesn't have the same effect. So we're gonna have a secondary color as well. So add a new color, secondary color. And this is gonna be a darker blue or greeny color because this is like, kind of underwater the color you see when you look at water you see like underwater color y you would know you know what i mean uh, let's go a bit darker it's better so now we have this but, but how the hell do we put these two in at once well we can't so we can use a lerp again but this also isn't going to solve our problem because all this is going to do is go between the two values it's not going to give us an actual mix like it's either going to give us one the other or the color in between but we want to have we want to be able to see a kind of transition color so like You'll see now uh, if we, well, I can't actually show you it now. I'd have a, I'd have a look value to alter. Well, let's say, does it simply work like this? If I set this to one, 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 as you see now, it's gone all the way to this color. And then if it was uh, zero, 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 it would be the other color. Now, what we want to do is we want to use some kind of effect to smoothly transition between two. So we need a gradient. And one good way of getting a gradient is the Fresnel effect. So. Let's get the frontal effect here. And we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, we'll just leave the frontal. Well, actually, no. We'll um, add another vector one for this. For the venal. Uh, yeah, sorry. Frontal power. And let's put that in. So that's, that's not right. We need to move it up. Uh, Yeah, 1.3 will do. Obviously, you can you can tweak that as well. Um, now, you see a problem here is that it's re it's reverse. It's the wrong way around because right now this doesn't look very good, does it? Uh, it's looking okay, but it's it's not great. Um, first of all, I want to get rid of the uh, smoothness. You can obviously tweak that for yourself, but I don't like it. On water, obviously, you want some reflection. We'll sort that out at the end, so it doesn't look like rocks. Um, so now we can, we need to invert these two because they're hooked up back to front. There we go. Now we have more. Yeah, that's better. Uh, we might also want to 
like you see the problem with this is the green is closest to the camera and the blue's furthest away. And if I move my camera around here, it gives the same effect. The green is always the closest bit to me. Now, really, that's that's not what you want. You want it to be. You don't want it, you don't want it to rely on your camera. You want it to rely on the world. So we'll just get a world output here, and that can go straight into here. Let me just see if this works. No, sorry, we need to have a frontal effect as well to make it appear in the middle. Frontal effect. Into. Ah, I'm, I'm being an idiot. This frontal effect here shouldn't even be here. I just accidentally added a frontal. Um, we need to get the power of this and this. Now. Oopsie daisy, what have I gone and done? Oh, I forgot to hook that back up. I'm being silly. Uh, that's still not given the exact, uh, exact effect I want. But it looks good from the camera. I don't know, you can tweak the values you want. I, I'm not, I'm not going to say it, just tweaking values for the whole time. You know, I might put that back to 0.5 as well, like, because we want shininess on the water. Yeah, it might be a bit too much there. I could just uh, put this into the parameters so we can tweak this. There we go. I'll leave it like that. But anyway, uh, I think that's everything. So, as I explained, here's our texture. We got two of them so that we can lerp between them. Then we've got um, the offset to move them at the same rate uh, but over here I let them take in a an X and a Y speed so that you can choose whether it moves more in one direction or the other and then we combine them to be an, a vector 2 for the offset and then at the end we obviously we can have the property here to lurk between them and then up here is where we sort out the color of the actual shader now if I put this onto a plane Yeah, depending on how you look at it, you get different color effects, and obviously, like, you will want to tweak that, and I'm not going to sit here doing that for the whole thing, but I hope the person who asked for this got what they wanted. This is pretty much as, this is as much as you can really do in shader graph currently with water, because you can't do vector offsets, though you can actually, um, in, you can actually attach code to your water plane to move the vertices. Uh, that is possible, but it'll be a lot easier with the shader when that's actually a, um, option to option in the shaders when they release the new version but you know that's just a matter of time before they do it but yeah i've got a few other uh, suggestions been given for shader videos so i'll cover those in the next few days uh, someone asked for a kind of glass looking like um, a a glass shader where the objects behind the glass look blurred a bit and someone asked for a um, vector where like for example liquid inside a jar faces upwards when the jar tilts and I'll, I'll try and do that I'll try and make the best effect I can in shader graph which is limited to shader graph currently but you can still do some really cool effects if I find that you can't really make a certain effect in shader graph I will just postpone it until you can in the new updates um, I've got a list ready to uh, keep adding new op uh, ideas that people give me but for now uh, this is it as I said um, I would help a lot if people left suggestions for what kind of Unity tutorials they want for like game ideas or like mechanics in games. That's the kind of thing that I, I like to make tutorials on, as well as Python and whatever else I do. Um, also, obviously, subscribing to this channel would be lovely. I actually reached 200 yesterday, and now I'm already at 220, so it's going up pretty damn fast. Um, so I think a lot of people are liking these shader tutorials. Um, obviously, if you do like the video, then liking it would show support and also commenting what you want to see more of. But I think I've covered everything I normally say, so thanks for watching and goodbye.